Thank you very much, everyone. So um, the format here is I'm going to talk off um, some slides um, and uh, it'd be great if we could do a Q&A at the end. Um, so um, so to save your questions till, till the very end and then we can uh, it'd be really good if we can have a conversation about uh, purpose and, and how we how, how we feel about that at the moment, how, you know, if those of us are furloughed, how do we feel about the purpose that uh, our organisation that we are going back to it has and, and, um, and also how we feel about our own purpose. So, um, so format is I'll share some slides. Uh, I'm going to talk um, about some of the work that I do with organisations around purpose. Um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, your own purpose and connecting your own purpose with, with what you do at work. So very much the intention here is that you get some insights into its importance and its importance within uh, as a driver of culture at work, um, but also get to for you to think about um, how aligned your purpose is and who you are with uh, with the rest of the um, organisation. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen now. Okay. Right, so um, I've said four things today, three things today, culture and purpose at work, uh, four ways uh, of being, which is a model which I'll introduce to people, which I think is going to be really helpful um, for a lot of people who, uh, are, you know, are currently furloughed and kind of, you know, sort of, as I've been talking to a lot of people, not, you know, it's, it's odd, it's uncertain times, it's unsettling. So this is a model really to get you think about how you are being in these times and kind of how, what that's doing for you. And then I'm going to talk about your purpose. Um, I am a coach doing a lot of work with uh, organizations uh, and I'm often asked about purpose and kind of the point of purpose and, and what is purpose so I'm just going to uh, talk towards the end a little bit about uh, your own purpose and, and what that is and what that means for you okay so um, my story starts here really when uh, when I really got interested in culture when I was I was the MD of a content creation uh, agency and actually it started well before I, I joined um, because this is a snapshot from my contract uh, that I got alongside the usual kind of welcome on board and all the rest of it and uh, when I down in 8.1 I read that I had 30 minutes for lunch um, which I thought at the time I thought this is unbelievable here I am I'm a sort of senior member of the organization I'm on the board, uh, you know, I get that you might specify what hours I have to work, but 30 minutes for lunch, that didn't feel right. And it was really interesting how this was a, one of my first contacts with the organization and the kind of alarm bells uh, were ringing at that point. Because actually, as what I sub subsequently learned, is what they, they didn't mean 30 minutes for lunch, they meant we expect you to be at your desk at seven in the morning. We expect you to be at your desk at seven in the evening, at least uh, working or working for us. And it was very much, um, you know, I learned a lot from that organization because uh, it was a hugely toxic organization. It taught me a lot about the kind of cultures that I didn't want to be involved with and, and helped me shape some of my values. But really fascinating sort of, you know, I got a clue to, to culture there uh, within the first thing that they, they'd sent out to me. And so the questions are, I'm often asked, which is, what is culture? Um, I'm just going to move. Okay. So I'm just moving this so I can actually see the whole thing. So, so culture is really um, is a, is commonly shared values and group behaviours that exist in patterns over time. They, as it says here, it could be they're explicit or they're implicit. But it's basically it's the social order of the organisation. It's the, the how we do things around here. It's also attitudes and behaviours of, of individuals that are unconsciously shaped by culture. You know, if I wasn't at my desk at seven in the morning or, or some of the time and things like that, I was seen to be not working hard enough. And it wasn't kind of seen as a, you know, I wasn't seen to be you know, a team player and properly playing within all of this. And so, you know, working, being at your desk early, even though you weren't productive uh, uh, at all a lot of the time, a lot of people were just doing it because they were scared and they felt they had to be there, defines the norms of, uh, of an organisation. So culture defines what is encouraged and discouraged, accepted or, or rejected. Uh, culture can be expressed in a, in a purpose statement or something like that or a manifesto or, or anything. It can be stated, this is the kind of organisation we say, say we are. Um, but also, most powerfully, it's usually implicit. It's the kind of ways that things are, are, are like around here. So there are various components to it, but essentially culture is the, is the social order. It's the way that, that we behave in order to be cohesive and also it's the way we understand how we behave to be successful. There are 
three defining characteristics of culture. Um, it's shared, obviously, culture, you know, kind of a culture on your own. It, it only uh, exists in groups. It's holistic, and that's one of the things that is hugely important about culture. And I'm going to give you some questions to think about the culture of the, the organizations that, that you work for um, and are furloughed from uh, at the moment. But it's, culture is, is holistic, it's multi dimensional, it's interconnected, and you can only really understand culture uh, as a whole, which is why it's often easier for me when I work with organizations in, whole, uh, in culture as an outsider to look inside. And also, it's all, also easier for me when, because I do stakeholder analysis and things like that talk to lots of people about culture um, it, it gives me a better picture than a lot of people who write in amongst it um, and culture is also sticky as well there's a model called the attraction selection attrition model which basically means people like us uh, do well in this organization if you're not like us you don't do, do so well so you either leave or you get fired so so the thing about culture is that they can, they're self-reinforcing so so they basically attract like-minded people who behave in certain sorts of ways and, and, and essentially reward all of that behavior so these are defining characteristics of, of culture um, why should we care about it? It's a, an old expression which various people have uh, attributed to, but this expression about culture eating strategy for breakfast, it's so dangerously true. I've found many times when I've gone into organizations where I've done work on, on culture, it has been, or done particularly on digital transformation projects and the like, it's really been the sort of the way that we behave around here has, has mean, meant that it's been very hard to embed changes in strategy or changes in working, new ways of working. Um, and so culture does eat strategy for breakfast. So whatever you want as an organization, that you, where you want it to go, how you want it to be, you know, the kind of way you want to, to, to behave, that the, the way we already behave and how, who we are uh, gets in the way of where you what the direction you want to might take that, that that company as it says here for businesses to thrive compete and innovate to stay ahead you know you can have clear and effective strategies because they give a logic for what you're doing but time and time again i've seen and people have told me that uh, basically the way we do things around here eight means those strategies ain't going to work because they people feel threatened by, by them or they don't seem to fit in or whatever um, so my example you know management might want everyone to be chained to their desk but the truth of it that a huge number of people resented having to work this way so they were trying to create a hard working hard church charging culture but in fact actually it was backfiring on them because basically people were only really doing it were being present presenteeism only really doing it because they felt they, they had to and they were scared scared not to so we should care about culture because um, there's lots of um, stats out there and I'm going to give some specific ones on, on purpose which is a component of culture but we should care about it because uh, there's a, a study done by Corn Ferry a little while back but basically they found that whatever uh, expectations of performance that there existed for individuals that were surveyed within this engaged workers are 50% more likely so but it makes sense you know if, if you're absolutely engaged with the organization if you're throwing yourself into it if you, if you if you feel there's a great fit with that organization you're going to be performing uh, and at your best because frankly you're going to be happiest and you're going to be enjoying yourself and and bringing your whole self to work and companies with engaged workers compared with those who are disengaged they have higher employee retention no great surprise there because people in, uh, 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 embracing the culture they're enjoying themselves there they have but significantly they have 89 percent higher customer satisfaction there is a, a direct line correlation between companies which have positive cultures where people are thriving and the, the satisfaction of the customers that they do business with and hugely significant in this study they, they have fourfold higher revenue growth so positive cultures strong cultures good cultures cultures that people thrive in are really important for the success and health of any organization so one of the things that uh in the work that i've done and I've do, i do work with agencies i do work with other creative businesses and i talk to people all, all kinds of businesses about culture and how to create cultures and fix cultural problems for them one of the, the the biggest problems i've come across is a massive disconnect between what management say that culture should be um, and i've i've been guilty of this i've gone on the offsite i've kind of you know uh, had some great um sort of sessions with people sort of creating vision statements values all of that good stuff you know kind of all of that kind of good workshop stuff come back and then you know sort of 
sold that into the business or shared that with the business and then wondered why six months later, even three months later, you know, that, that things aren't the way that we want them to be. They're not the way that we envisage the culture of the organization to be. <clears throat> and that's because there is a massive disconnect between, often between what management think culture is and actually where the work actually happens, where, where, where things are done. It, and by that, it's, you know, people turning up 10 minutes late for a, for a meeting and that being tolerated. That's, that's, you're tolerating that, that, that culture. So where the work actually happens uh, and versus what management intent is basically gives rise to what, what, what I call a culture air sandwich. Um, and the air sandwich is a strategy term that I sort of basically nicked and, uh, and used in this case. Um, so as it says here, you know, you've got management strategy and good intentions and then where the work happens and the culture really exists. Um, so, you know, the top layer, you, as I said, cascade it down, but there's a problem. This is an air sandwich. There's nothing in the middle. There's not enough agreed, agreed best ways of working. There are too many negative behaviors tolerated. There are teams fighting rather than collaborating. And there are all sorts of other negatives in that culture that is the real truth of the culture that as a management that you're tolerating. And so frequently when I go into organizations, I discover that they've got a culture air sandwich uh, with no tasty filling. And as it says in here, you know, when you're at Pret deciding what sandwich to buy, it's the filling that matters, not, not the bread. Um, so through a lot of research and experience working with all sorts of different kinds of organizations through a significant and deep um, uh, meta-analysis of cultural thinking and academic studies, I basically come to um, six fillings that you need for, for your culture air sandwich. Purpose is going to be my focus today, but what I thought I'd quickly do is just share what they are so you've got a good sense of, of what these are. And as a quick note, um, I'll be sharing this uh, deck on, on the Slack channel, and I'm also um, able to answer any questions on the Slack channel going forward. I'd like to do a QA and a on purpose afterwards. So there is gonna be plenty of opportunities if you're interested in the other fillings of the, the culture of sandwich to, to, to get into those. Um, and just as a, uh, just a little bit more sort of where this came from, basically I do a culture diagnostic where I go into organizations um, and there are six drivers of, of culture. So I have run this questionnaire in quite a series of, uh, of companies now where it's a fixed questionnaire they answer questions about their culture um, which they we which is then fed, fed back to me we have a, a session where we talk about it I then make recommendations what that's enabled me to do is to really take the all the, the sort of theorizing and the management uh, um, uh, study that I've done and actually then get into the real world and say does this stack up what I find is that companies that have positive cultures where people are thriving really focus on six core areas. There are degrees of overlap between these, but there are six core areas that they focus on. We're going to talk about purpose today. So that's about having a purpose beyond profits and so that the people who work there do work they believe in. There's also collaborative working. So it's knowing how to work well together. So a lot of the times that people are not taught or we don't understand how to work well together together so it's actually organizations that focus on, on encouraging great teamwork behavior it's also focusing on having a growth mindset so that is everything from as an individual uh, committing to continuously learning through to an organization ensuring that you create a place where people can learn and grow um, authenticity and integrity is hugely important so it's not not tolerating bad behavior and actually for often for senior management modeling the good behavior that they want to be seen want to have seen is emotional safety which is really important and that plays into basically I feel that I can could bring myself to work in the way that I, I want to be. So I, I feel I can bring my whole self to work. I feel I don't have to hold myself back. I feel I work in, a, in, a, in an environment in which I can say, I can speak out and, and, and talk talk truth I can also we can you know we, we talk well together and then the last part of the culture air sandwich fillings is kindness uh, which is where this came from was basically I was I was being asked a lot by um, HR people and leaders within organizations about kindness because they um, and it's one of those things when we had about five people saying, you know, I'm really interested in kindness. How can we create a kind of workplace? Um, what I, I, I'm understanding and, and, and finding now is the, the, the power of kindness uh, in the workplace. So those are the, those are the six fillings. Um, let's focus on number one, which is purpose beyond profits and doing work we believe in. And what I'm just going to 
do now is talk about the fact that purpose works, but also then I'm going to uh, give you some questions to, to really ask yourself about purpose within your organization. Um, so I did some work with a software company and the CEO said that when we created a greater reason for being at work, it transformed everything. We all felt like we were doing something meaningful. People are happier, they stay, and they really enjoy their work. Um, so purpose works. I could, you know, if you want the evidence, I can share it with you that there is plenty of it uh, that, that shows that purpose works. Um, so uh, EY, the consultancy in Harvard University, did a study of 474 businesses and they concluded purpose driven companies make more money, have more engaged employees and more loyal customers and even better innovation and transformation of change. So, I mean, you can and like everything you want your business to be like is kind of wrapped up in that you know there is no question that when an organization has purpose as a north star and that purpose is beyond profits is greater than profits that people feel they have something to align on and and work towards and contribute towards um and there's a, a, a hugely insightful and not very often uh, cited, but really powerful study uh, by an organization called Gartenberg, sorry, an individual called Gartenberg. Uh, and they've studied half a million people across time, over 429 companies. And what interestingly uh, they have found, they've also found that, that purpose is a, is a driver of uh, organizational success and, and growth, is that middle managers are hugely effective in the expression of purpose within an organization. And that's hugely significant. Without their buy-in and their active work on it, purpose doesn't really stand much of a chance. Now this goes back, this is right into this culture piece of um, you know, a culture strategy for, for breakfast. Again, time and time again, I have seen that when, when a middle management layer um, haven't bought into the purpose or don't think the purpose is important, it doesn't come to life. And one of the reasons why this middle tier of management, you know, account director, account manager, you know, sort of uh, creative director, you know, it's kind of like not, not the board level, why they are so important in purpose is because they influence up in terms of the working with, with the executive level. They influence and, and act sideways in terms of working with different departments and other people. And they also execute sort of work uh, within the team that they work in so they are linchpins to actually making culture come to life day to day with uh, purpose come to life within within the organization interesting purpose um one of the things that the, the feedback I'm, I'm getting from from a lot of people is actually we see purpose right now in in how we're in how we are and you know and I, a lot of people when i've been talking to uh, on on this subject have you know said i i i, I feel purposeful i may be at home and being at home is hard and being furloughed is hard and being associated, disassociated from my work colleagues is hard and having the kids at home, these are all difficult. But actually what, what we're seeing, we read you know, in, the, in the media and conversations that we're having is that we are on purpose. We're staying at home to protect the NHS and save lives. We are doing our bit to flatten the curve and, and, and medical staff and other key workers, they are hugely purposeful because they're, they're out there saving lives. Um, so we are seeing the power of purpose uh, really now outside of work, but, but in, 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 uh, in our lives. Uh, more than perhaps many of us have, have seen before. And we, we know that our purposeful actions are, are saving lives. But what's really important is then what people have fed back to me is, you know, we know it's tough. It's tough being at home. It's tough being furloughed. It's, you know, all of these things are hard. It's tough having the, you know, the kids at home and, and, and homeschooling and all these other things. But we know how good it feels to be on purpose. And we can also see the difference it, it's making. So, one of the, the things that I am often asked about in the agency world is, oh, it's hard to have kind of purpose for our, our kind of business. Um, and my response to that is, well, frankly, I just don't think you're, you're looking uh, hard enough. Um, you know, it's because all businesses can, can have a purpose that's beyond profits. There should be an organizing idea behind your, your, your business that, that contributes towards the greater 
good and, and the greater richness of, of the world rather than, than just making money. Um, as I think is one, one Jim Barksdale, uh, uh, who's an investor from Silicon Valley saying, you know, if the purpose of your business is, ma is making money, that's like saying the purpose of a human is to breathe. Um, so there is a purpose out there for your organization. You know, it's, it's a case of, you know, if you're, if you're management and, and you've got influence on, on management, it's kind of like working with them to find out what that, that, that purpose is because without question having a purpose that's beyond profits gives us more meaning at work and and you know sort of that's one of the things that that is more powerful and plenty of studies have shown this is more powerful than the, the, than the pay we get it's actually believing that something that we do makes a difference uh, on a on a day to day basis so questions that i ask people uh, about purpose um, so this is a part of the diagnostic uh, that I give and I'd be really interested in in your comments on on these questions uh, at the end of when when I, I stop talking um, oh well, actually before I get onto that just uh, is, uh, is is it the middle managers are not getting it no because often when I talk to their bosses um, they're as blank as, as, as anybody else um, and back in 2015 you know Harvard when they talked to Harvard executive about purpose you know most of them less than half said that the company has worked strong one another 44 percent said the company's still trying to develop one so so purpose you know it, it doesn't it's not living throughout organizations as as much as it should and i think you know it's one of the things that we can take out of of, of this session when 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 the new normal happens and, and we go back to work it is about questioning the purpose of the organizations that we work for and questioning particularly as middle level people how how we could be doing things to bring that purpose to life if there's a good purpose or if if there isn't a strong purpose you know what should we be doing um so i asked um, six questions with of organizations uh, about purpose and um, so the question I'm, I'm asking you um, is how the company that you are furloughed from and you'll be going back to how does it stack up on on purpose um, so what I do is I ask um, a leader within the organization uh, to score on one to five um, an answer which they think is the predominant answer would be the predominant answer if you ask most people in their organization uh, these questions. I found over time that these questions are, are, are a great indicator of the, the shape of purpose and, and whether purpose is really a core part of the, of the culture of, a, of, a, of the organization. Um, so the first of which is obviously asking about having a, a purpose and that is genuinely core to, to who we are. Um, Amazing. Lots of organisations don't, but but that's the start point. Is actually having it that is embedded within the, the way that you operate a, as a business, and um, also the people in general. So that that's the whole network of people associated with your company. So it's the people who work there. It's the the clients you have. It's the 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 partners you have you know value what what you stand for what what you stand for as an organization is seen to be important and relevant and, and be making a difference and then fundamentally as i said earlier it's about having a purpose that makes you unique in some way you know the purpose should be core to the dna of your organization it should be something that that is unique to the way that you operate and and, and who you are um, fundamentally also um, so again this is these are questions i ask people to explore how embedded purpose is within an organization. So this is a uh, question four is really about the operational elements. So our purpose has a meaningful impact on the decisions we make and the actions we take. And as you know, if essentially purpose is not being brought up in significant meetings where, where, where you're making strategic decisions or, or talking about, you know, if there's a town hall or a sort of Friday drinks or something like that, talking about what, what you're doing as a, as a business. Um, if you're not referencing that back to your purpose, then, then purpose isn't really working hard enough for you. Um, and then fundamentally, there's also knowing what you do makes a, a difference to overall purpose. Part of the secret source of purpose is actually that people feel that they're doing something on a day-to-day -day basis in their work that makes a difference. Purpose shouldn't be, and, and uh, I'll, I'll put the link on it uh, in, in the Slack group, I, I wrote something on LinkedIn, um, a couple of weeks back about um, how I just went on a, on a team away day with a load of people and cleared a, a plot of land to, to create something that was a, an open space in a, in a city area um, and how that was great, great fun we you know, really enjoyed ourselves um, 
that wasn't purpose that was a valuable exercise in us doing something useful in the community but that wasn't purpose if that's that's what we thought it was um so purpose ha really has to be embedded in the day-to-day -day. it's not something you can do as an off-site once and then forget about it and, you know once you put some photographs on instagram etc um and and then the final element of purpose is i'm proud to to tell people where i work so you know that's if you have a purpose of which you're proud and and, and is meaningful in some way then then organize organizations like that you know people report to me that yeah they're very proud of, of, of where they are and what what they do and the purpose is a, is a big driver in that so so that was a sort of romp through as it were um, kind of the importance of purpose things to get you thinking about purpose within, within your organization um, the two other bits I'd like to, to do now and then we can go into kind of a general Q&A um, and again if anyone wants to have conversation offline about this in, in more detail I can I've got you know content on how you, you embed purpose within an organization um, that would take too long uh, for this call um, I'd like to just move on now to um, what's called the four ways of being model uh, and its impact on on purpose now this model is something that has been developed by a sort of thinker in the kind of personal development uh, space uh, and then taken on by um, these guys who wrote a book called the 15 commitments to conscious leadership um, and they really looked at uh, this model and uh, and leading within an organization what I found when I was going through it was that actually was asking some very interesting questions um, it made me think about how I feel about where I am in lockdown and what I'm doing in lockdown how I'm responding to, to lockdown uh, and this un uncertain situation and, and it made me think a, a bit about, you know, kind of what's my purpose? What am I about? What am I doing? Um, so I hope that you find, and I, I'm, I'm essentially going to talk through the, the, the different levels of ways of being, um, and then I'll, I'll relate them to purpose at the end. But I, I hope that you'll find something in, in this, which makes you just wonder a bit about you know, how you are being in, in this unusual, uncertain and difficult uh, situation. Um, so the four ways of being are uh, to me, uh, and I'll go into into detail on each of them. So that, that life is something happens to me by me, which is about I'm making life happen. You know, I'm 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 in control. I'm forging ahead through me, which is I cooperate with life happening. That's I'm kind of moving. Uh, I'm moving along with life, and I, I'm in the flow of life. And then as me, life is me. Um, so these are sort of they're quite out there in the sense of they they are what well, I'm going to talk about states of consciousness I'm going to you know I'm going to get close to talking about spirituality take of this what you will what you find useful um, but the simple reality is that these are these do point to states of being and states of consciousness and and that's you know my business is called uh, conscious work uh, and and really our focus is is on getting people to to really be present at work and be but also to be present with who they are being at that time and and how they are interacting with people so this is really me sort of getting you to think about who who you are being and how you're how you're dealing and interacting with what What's going on at the moment so and the the point here is that these are states of being uh, they're not stages you don't kind of go from to me to as me and then stay there in some form of bliss um, and you can you can move from these states in, in minutes or you can get stuck in you know you know in in one for a long time or you can actually never never get to, to some of these states um, the key to, to any shifts that you make, if you want to make a shift, is to be conscious of what state you are in at any given moment. Kind of be, be you know, cool, be, not hard on yourself that you might be in that state, but be conscious that you are in that state uh, and question whether that's really serving, serving your needs. So let's, um, let's go into each of these and then I'll relate these to, to, to purpose uh, at the end. And then the next section, I'll just talk about thinking about your purpose and, and, and connecting your purpose with work. Um, so to me, life happens to me. It would be very easy for, and it's, I've heard a lot of people expressing concerns and, and, and feeling this way, frankly, through what's happened to, to them and being stuck at home, being furloughed. Um, you know, it's very easy to, to fall into this as the posture so it says here it's a victim. So life happens to me. In this state of business, life is happening to me. So 
external events stuff is all happening to me um, and of course can be external events so in, a, in case of what we're going through at the moment COVID-19 and fellow and lockdown uh, but it can be another person you know it can be I, I'm coaching somebody at the moment and he's having a terrible time because he's got two kids who are only four years old he's trying to homeschool them he's trying to, to, to he's got his own business and you know these codes are happening to him you know because they're, they're bursting in on, on calls and things like that so uh, the cause can be of things happening to you can be uh, you know other people as well but whatever it is in this state you are you've convinced yourself that you're the victim of, of external forces whatever they are um so life happens to me the posture is you're a victim you know this is it's all happening to me you know God, where is me um and so what your experience of this is and the, the, what you'll be saying and what you'll be feeling is you'll be blaming and you're complaining you'll be complaining about lockdown you can you know complaining about furlough you'll be complaining about queues waiting to the queue to get into the supermarket you know whatever it is and so the beliefs that are driving this is that there is a problem there's a problem out there and someone's at fault you know the government didn't order enough protective uh, equipment or whatever it is you know whatever uh, you're, you're going through your head at the time uh, and that somebody should fix this kind of like you know not me somebody somebody should fix this you know it should be fixed um, and the key question in this state is, is you know, understandably yes we're all in this position uh, but it's kind of like it's about I'm a victim and, and, and in this particular COVID uh, situation yes and um, we're all victims you know right let's blame somebody um, and, and there are benefits to, to be in this state because you kind of are oh, fine I'm separate you know it's kind of a, oh, I'm miserable you know people wallowing in their own, their own misery it, it's you know it's it's dramatic it defines you as who you are it's like I'm I'm this person and then there's all these other other people and it you know it can give you an, a sort of an adrenaline high of kind of like, oh I'm, I'm in this terrible state so so think about life happening to me is that you know, is that a state that you recognize? Is that one that you're in now? Is that one that you're shifting in and out of? Just think about the whole point of, of, of sharing these is to get you to think about them and think about how you might be being as a consequence. So by me, I'll make, make life happen. So this is a state of consciousness, which is very much about creation. Um, instead, so instead of believing that the cause of their experience is outside themselves, you believe you're the cause of your experience. And that all of life is the learning experience to be built upon and you create your experience and your reality. I think the best example of this, frankly, can be annoying at times, but of people uh, saying, you know, what, well, it's a fantastic opportunity to learn. I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. I'm going to, you know, achieve all sorts of things. I'm going to bake bread. I'm going to do whatever, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, that, that, that attitude of, right, I'm in a shit situation, but I'm going to make the best of it which can be hugely empowering, can, can be great, can also be annoying from what we see on some of the posts on, on Facebook, et cetera. So very much your, the, the, the state here is you're a creator, you're appreciating, so you're kind of like seeing the upside. Um, so the belief is problems are here for me to learn from. So COVID-19, lockdown, being furloughed is, a, is an opportunity for, for growth and, and, and learning. Um, you know, so I, you know, in some cases outside of this particular situation, I created a problem them here so i'm going to learn from it and um, so that's very much these kind of beliefs that you know life is a learning experience and it's about you kind of you know creating the actions to to get out of that and again i'm not putting value judgments into any of these beliefs or saying that some are better than others i think some can serve you more at times more than than, than others um but these aren't value judgments these are just getting to think about where you might be so the question there's a couple of questions here which is what could I learn from the situation uh, what do I want to create or you know how do I want to grow in this situation um, and the benefits here that, that being in this state you know if you can get in this frame of mind at times it can be very powerful in terms of you know, giving you a sense of empowerment thinking yes I can I can get myself out of this you know this this state I can move things forward I can make changes and it's very uh, very helpful in terms of defining you know you will want some desires for what you want Two more. Um, through me, I cooperate with uh, <clears throat> with life happening. Um, so into me and the by me states that you're very much at the the centre of things, um, and it's you know they're, they're they're ego centred. So into me, I'm disempowered. You know, life is just happening to me, and kind of I'm a victim. 
product and, and you know there's not much i can do about it in buy me that's kind of hard charging you know i'm creating my life you know there may be problems but i'm, I'm getting beyond them uh you know i'm powering forward um in the through me state and as i said i i, I am touching on on spirituality and, and it's whatever belief you have whether you have a belief or not um the uh, core of of a lot of spiritual and religious beliefs is that the, uh, is a consciousness of something beyond yourself that you know the life isn't just about uh, you and your ego um and that's something that that sometimes we 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 are some people are more aware of this than others some people are, are more ego centered than others there is a certainly you know there is more going on than just us um and so the posture in this is you're a co-creator uh, with 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 what is going on so the experience is allowing flow wonder and, and awe it's kind of like it's you know it's i'm in this but i'm also find you know what is going on sort of amazing right and you know i've had people report you know it's it's a bit like the way that people are talking about how how much we are together and the solidarity that we, we all have And it's people going out and banging the, you know, the sort of clapping at eight o'clock on a Thursday to support um, NHS and, and key workers. You know, so having a sense that you're that that, that that this isn't just about your ego. You're you're part of a of a greater whole, and that some, there is something bigger than going on. Um, and but it, it, this belief is the source of all meaning. So it's this, you know, that there's a sense and and uh, you know at its uh, at its strongest that that everything is perfect, whole and complete. That the, the the life is perfect, whole and complete. You know, people who are in this state, deeply in this state, would say, well, there there are something, some good things that are coming out of COVID nineteen. So you know. Uh, and there are you know there are benefits to all of this as, as well as you know all the, the terrible things that happen and that life will handle all apparent problems you know that, that it's fine relax um and the question here is what wants to happen through me so i am something through through which life is flowing so what wants to happen through me you know it's not what who am i going to hard charging and make happen it's what wants to happen through me the benefits here are non-attachment and that there are limited possibility and there's plenty of everything some of you may identify with the state. Some of you may be thinking, "What the hell is he talking about?" Um, certainly, there are people, and the, the, the evidence this a lot. It's a state that sometimes you feel. Sometimes, those of you who have a mindfulness or a meditation practice may get to this position, uh, feel a sense of oneness or something like that. It's certainly uh, worth knowing about and considering whether this is a state that, that serves you, that you're in, and serves you in any way. Uh, and then the the ultimate state and as the guys who wrote the consciousness leadership book say most people are not interested in talking about this because most people are, are way away from this um and this is as me consciousness has two aspects which is this is a, a again this is very spiritual but the kind of a belief there is no separation all is one as one as all um and there is no me that the, the, not, not only is every, everyone and every, everything one, there is no separation and also no personal center. So this is an absolute belief in the kind of enfolding of everything into everything, and uh, that I'm, you know, that, 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 that being completely part of something else, that one with it, with it all, is basically the posture here. And so this is when you talk to people who are in this state or afterwards about being in the state, they they report peace, spaciousness so often this is achieved through a mindfulness or a, or a meditation practice or something like that uh, a sense of oneness uh, and there are no problems and no one to solve them uh, you know that it's about knowing there's no more questions um, and so the benefits are about experiencing this one oneness and a mental freedom and peace as i said you know this is something that a lot of people never get to never experience uh, and a lot of people you know have questions about it but it, it but it is a state that that some people report now, why have I shared those? I've shared all of those. And again, as I said, you can read it later when I put it into the Slack channel, because I think it's useful to, to think about where your head is now, what, you, what's, what state of being are you in? Um, it's useful to think that maybe I'm being in, you know, in a victim in all of this. And it's useful to think, you know, maybe I'm sort of being hard charging and kind of like, you know, maybe a bit too much. So I think it's a useful exercise to, to really be conscious of the state you're in and whether that's serving you, as I've said but purpose so as leaders when you are and, and as individuals at work you will be in different states so you'll be in a meeting and people will be turning up late and you'll be going why does this always happen to me you know you, at that point you're in a victim state um or you'll be in a meeting where you're kind of hard charging ahead and kind of like you know right we're going to do it this way and and, and all of that and maybe you're being too 
uh, you know, sort of uh, by me. Maybe you're not incorporating other people. So it's useful to think of purpose, uh, and I'm going to bring you on to individual purpose in a minute, but it's useful to think of company purpose in, in this way, in these states. So the two me, the, the victim state, you know, these are all going to, and, and the, the guys who've did, done this work on conscious leadership have found, you know, again, um, through a lot of uh, conversations they've had with people, and I'm starting to see this now, I'm using this model, a lot of the organizations that are kind of in this victim state, um, or, you know, the life happening to them, you know, what purpose, they don't tend to have a purpose, um, they feel that perhaps they should have and they don't, they just, you know, but a lot of people in these roles, you know, I have a role to play, I'm a, I'm a account director, I'm a business director, I'm a project director, I'm whatever it is, you know, I, I don't have anything to do with purpose. Well, that's, you know, purpose. The, the, the culture's happening to you in that case. Um, by me, I make life happen. So very much a sense of ownership of, of purpose and, and declaring it and going out and get it. And, it, you know, that takes energy, but it's also energizing as well. Um, through me, so cooperating with life happening, which is having a purpose which is transcendent beyond human experience, uh, and you receive it through listening. So it's kind of, you know, it's very much about what is what is the purpose, uh, what are what, what is the purpose that you're drawn to, to have? And I'm going to talk about that in, in a minute or two. Um, the last bit, as, as me, uh, being a purpose of the same, so it, because everything is enfolded in everything else, you know, it's impossible to, to, to be off a purpose because that's what the purpose is. So, quick run through, through that model, which I hope you find useful. <coughs> Last part of this, uh, and I'll finish up in five minutes or so, um, is I want to talk about um, your purpose and also your purpose and how that relates to work. <coughs> Excuse me one second. So, um, I coach people and sometimes people say, you know, I haven't a clue what my, my purpose is. Can you tell me what my purpose is? Is there, you know, you, you Google on online and you can find plenty of stuff on how how to work out what your purpose is and kind of, all, you know, all, all of that sort of stuff. And um, so what I want uh, to do here is just to give you some, some thought pieces about your purpose, uh, you know, you as an individual and how that connects with work uh, for, for, you know, thinking about the organizations that you're currently further from that we'll go back to. How does, how does who you are connect with the purpose of that organization? If I go right back to the start where I talked about the organization that I joined that had the toxic culture, one of the reasons that, that I left in the end was that my values and what was important to me in life, which is creating workplaces for people to thrive, was completely opposed to, to, to that culture. So, you know, it was a, I had the, the, the fortunate exercise of being somewhere incredibly negative to work out what I, what I wanted and what was important to me. Um, you have the benefit of, of some time at this time and, and some distance to, to question whether what's important to you is being served by, by where you work and, and what you do. Um, so as it says here, um, I can't tell you what your purpose is, uh, but, but what I can can tell you it's not something you should be striving for. This is the big mistake that, that people make, is that, that it's kind of like my right, purpose out there, I'm going out to, to, to get that. It's fine to have a mission in life, it's fine to have something that you want to achieve, but that isn't your core purpose. Because your purpose isn't about what you do, your purpose is about who is you. So, uh, I came across this uh, insight or this observation, call it what you will, uh, not so long ago, because I was very much in that camp of, I've got this purpose, I've got to go out there, charge out there, make it happen, the job I have has got to be aligned with that. And I actually realised that actually it's about being me and it's, it's about bringing my unique values and expertise and kind of who I am into the work that I do is actually how I bring my purpose fully to life. It isn't about I'm setting out to achieve something because that's at the end of the day where we work, we all have our unique contribution to make because of who we are. And that essentially is your purpose, is, is really to, to, to be you at your, your fullest extent. Because um, you're not here to, to create things, uh, although you will, you know, the purpose of being on this planet isn't kind of, I'm going to create a load of stuff. I mean, you will, because that's what we do. That's what we do at work. And you're not here explicitly to create results, although you do. And sometimes they're positive. Hopefully they are. Sometimes they're, they're negative. And um, essentially, if you get down to it, and you, one of the reasons you hope you see now why I shared those, those ways of being was to get you to think about 
why you're here you know why you know and this is a uh, you know this is me very much being in that state that open state of being get you to think about you know what what your purpose and kind of you know why are you here doing what you're doing why are you here working in jobs that when you go back doing what you're doing and and, and the belief my belief is is you're here to be present in the world for the creation of you it's really about the uh, focusing on you and who you are uh, and so when people say, you know, to me, and I get this, uh, and I've asked this question of myself many times, I want to know what my purpose is, and, and particularly in relation to work, I want to know what my purpose is, how that fits with the purpose of the organisation, you know, is there a good match, am I in the right place? Um, get you know, about your purpose is aligned with you and who you are. Uh, and what you'll get is the results of all different kinds of things. So it's about focusing on on you and kind of you know what 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 gives you joy. So as I'm going to talk about in the next slide. Um, oops, I think. Uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, there isn't anything that anybody wants, uh, or whether it's a material object or a relationship or a pile of money or a circumstance or an So your purpose, if you think about it, is joy. It's about making yourself happy because, um, and the result of that is expansion in your life. So I'm encouraging you to think about what brings you joy? What makes you happy? What are those moments where you are feeling at your best and most fulfilled? Because the issue is that most people, particularly when it comes to sort of working, uh, is they have it backwards. They think if they create things, they have things, they achieve things, then they'll have joy and happiness. Um, and, you know, particularly in the, the toxic culture that I work for there was an encouragement of you know smash it out you know kind of <clears throat> really work really hard and you might get a promotion you might get more money you might get a car or whatever that's a very materialistic kind of old-fashioned way of looking at it um, but what I'm the point I'm making now and yes this is easy for me to say and yes this can be hard to do if you're stuck in your flat on your own and you're furloughed and things aren't great um, but you are free to be happy now to experience joy in whatever circumstances you find yourself um, you know, for uh, as a simple example, I was taking my hour exercise out this morning, and you know, I just went for a walk. I'm lucky enough to to be near a wood, and and just getting that 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 joy of being that experience of of seeing you know what all this kind of life bursting out at the moment, and that that for me is you know again I'm going quite spiritual, but not making any uh, sort of you know, and not apologising for it. That that's about living my purpose. It was actually being in that situation, being out there, uh, really enjoying myself, and and making the most of my life so as it says here freedom's your basis joy's your quest and, and expansion is your inevitable result so that was a quick romp through purpose uh, i've taken you from the importance of purpose in terms of delivering uh, fourfold uh, revenue increases uh, for organizations i've talked about purpose as something that is a north star for organizations and and why it's so important to have that in order to create meaningful work, why it's important for particularly middle layers of, of, of management to bring purpose to life. I've talked about the power of culture and, and touched on some of the, the other drivers of, of culture. I've um, got you to think about ways of being and um, how you might be being at the moment as a way of sort of you know helping you to think about your current situation and also then i've talked and gone quite spiritual but deliberately so in terms of what is your purpose and how does that align with with how you think purpose is and how you how you should be an organization i'm now going to uh, encourage you to um share, ask me any questions or anything like that i'm very happy to to do this uh, uh, afterwards on the slack channel but anyone got any questions now and I wonder, Terry, if you, because you know how to do this, how to unmute everybody. Yeah, there we go. Everyone Good. Mark, is the hand raised? Yeah. Um, just an interesting question. I do a lot of brand positionings, and one of the key things that crops up is the massive conflation that nobody understands yeah, but, but purpose, that mission, really values. So what the word do... purpose is already confused in organizations' minds in the first place. So they're, so half the organizations don't really have a purpose because they're confused whether they mean it's their green credentials or whether it's the shareholder need. So to what extent do you think the problem is 
we just don't understand what we mean in organizations in the first place. So I've just videoed myself. Did you hear that? Hello? I think Magnus has uh, just dropped off. <laughs> just wait for him to uh, get back on. I think he's uh, got a bad connection issue. Cross between Zoom and Virgin. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. We'll just wait for Magnus to log back in. There he is. Yeah, I'm back. Yes. <laughs> Did you hear any of that? I got kicked out by my internet. Nothing at all. <laughs> you mean you didn't hear the entire talk? That's terrible. <laughs> um, so any questions? Uh, my internet was unstable, which is uh, I'm sure a lot of us are uh, struggling with that as well. Shall I go again? Yeah, yeah, do please. Okay. Uh, I do an awful lot of stuff in brands and brand positionings. And mm -hmm. the common reality that I, the first thing I normally have to do is go with people to say to explain what definitions are and yeah. among the biggest problems is the conflation and the company misunderstanding with what's a mission what's a vision yeah, purpose yeah. is the really confusing one because people say purpose because we want to be good for the environment to purpose yeah. that are values to yeah. what extent do you think that's the big problem we've got so confused as to what we're just generally what organizations should be or matters but when it comes to the word purpose it's just got lost in a mix of values meets yeah. mission meets vision and that's why people and organizations don't know what they're doing i th I, I i'm very sympathetic to what you're saying it's interesting i mean uh in the actually in the, the piece i wrote in linkedin the reason we went off to do that bit of work uh on clearing that piece of land was uh, for the purpose of the brand, which was an ice cream brand. And it's kind of, it was all about connectivity and uh, connection. And they had conflated social purpose with kind of like a brand marketing activity, as it were. And, and so they were fundamentally confused about what purpose was, because then they, purpose meant social purpose. That meant something I could just park and do every so often. Then you talk to people about mission and, and purpose and vision, uh, people haven't got a clue. I mean, you know, I tend to talk about, you know, purposes kind of like what, what's the North Star of your organization? What are you all about? And then I talk, you know, it varies on mission or vision, depending who I'm talking to. But you, you want to see a change in the world in some way. That's that's kind of why you're allying around it. But be interested to hear if you've got any way of defining these things that you find helpful. Uh, well, I, I go back to uh, people should be very clear. To my mind, a mission is what, why did I set up? What did I want to do? So if you either you know the reason i'm here and it's sort of to a certain extent the critical decisions things that you make vision is your stretch future and you should do the vision after your mission so if i'm really successful of what i do what could yes. happen um, and then values are are actually the thing we often forget about yeah. which is the way i might go about this. this is where i think people get very confused ironically i had a two-hour chat exchange with amazon yesterday whose vision is to be the world's most customer-centric business where there's no other option but chat there's no escalation about the problem and they've just judged and jury their own system and you're going well, where's the values on that um but you can't do anything about it but technically their their vision and values is to be customer centric i have to admit i missed a lot of that because uh, uh, you see, it all, time, you see it all the time with an organization, the VW. VW's supposed yeah. purpose was to be good to the environment, mm. believe it or not. But it gets <laughs> lost. Uh, and it, it, unless everybody, everybody's buying on the same direction, it's just a series of phrases that someone's put up on a chart. Yeah. And that's where the problem yeah, yeah. comes from. I, and I've, I've, what I've found 
uh, a lot of the time is that when purpose is most powerful is is actually it's not created on the management offsite it's actually created by the people who work there and and you know that the, the often the, there is actually a sense of of what we're doing and you know sort of a, a combined sense of that and it's certainly more powerful if, it, if it's something that it comes from not from not from down from above it, I mean, it's not, it, it isn't easy, but it, it's certainly, you know, it's, it's, it's an exercise that's well worth doing. And, you know, I, again, as I said earlier, I find a lot of the agency world, you know, people say, oh, it's very hard for us to put, have a purpose in here because we're doing the same as other people. Well, there's your problem. You're doing the same as other people. Maybe you need to think about doing something a bit different, being a bit more unique. Thank you. Any, any, other, any other questions? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to we we'll come to the end of this. I'm going to uh, duck out now. As I said, I'll be I'll be on Slack. Um, I'm on Slack all the time. Anyone uh, wants to to uh, ask me any questions, I'll, I'll make a version of this deck available. Um, I've also got um, the the culture um, drivers. Um, I'm producing some uh, content that's going out each week on, on LinkedIn. Very happy to share some links to, to people on that. Happy to talk one on one. And it, listen, if coach if anybody is um, struggling or wants to have a, a conversation one-on-one -on -one with me uh, about purpose or just you know wants to have a chat very happy to do that as well Terry anything to say before we go yeah I just want to thank you so much I thought that was brilliant and um, wow it was, just, it was powerful actually some of the stuff um, so we've also recorded the session uh, so you guys will be able to um, revisit it. And um, we have another event uh, this Friday for Independence FC, which is um, at 10 a.m. It's going to be a weekly occurrence. Um, and it's with Tessa Morton. I don't know if uh, you guys remember from the last one. Uh, she is, uh, yeah, she's our counsellor. Um, and she's just going to do, be doing, uh, you know, her usual brilliant thing, <laughs> checking in with everyone. And uh, we also will be, releasing the results from the survey so guys if you haven't done it yet please go onto the slack um sign up and uh fill out that survey please it's only six questions it's going to take you two minutes um and it's basically how we're going to gauge exactly what you need from independence fc um, because we're here to serve you so just let us know what you need and uh, we'll do and please get get on the slack uh, be active. Um, I think people are a bit shy at, at the moment, but get in there, introduce yourselves and get them the most that you can out of this because it's there for you. You've got, you know, people top of the industry um, just waiting there to, you know, answer your questions and, and help you. And hopefully by using independence FC, you can actually, when you do go back to work, you'll be even better than you were before, you know, um, and you'll have that edge <laughs> compared to the other people who have been carried on working. Um, so yeah, that's my little rant. Uh, but thank you so much again, Magnus. And uh, bye-bye, everyone. We'll see you at 10 a.m. on Friday.